this Monday night football props and week four recap edition of the sports gambling podcast. It's brought to you by underdog fantasy. Play the underdog pick them in college NFL we went up to 20 X in one game. Plus every Sunday, they're giving away a hundred thousand dollars. Use promo code S G P N at underdog fantasy for a hundred percent deposit bonus up to five hundred dollars. We're also brought to you by game time. Snag the tickets without the stress. Use promo code S G P N on your first purchase to save $20. Download the game time app and use promo code S G P N. This is Brian Bosworth, AKA the boss. And you're listening to S G P N let it ride brother. Peace out. Boz out. To the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean, second the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money Kramer. What's happening, Kram? Dog. Feeling good, Sean? Oh, I'm feeling great. The Eagles won. Now that's really the end of the day. If the Eagles win, that's what I care about. Earlier in the day, we're watching the games, obviously. And obviously. Red zones on with audio. And Sean, well, yeah, obviously. And Sean, uh, Something happens with Christian McCaffrey, who happens to be on a, a, a team, some fantasy interest or something. And I mentioned it. And he goes, "Oh, I, I had no idea." And I go, "Yeah, you were just really locked into the Eagles game." And w- as if I was attacking you, turned around and said, "Yeah, I'm a fan." <laughs> I was fired up. I, I I I get you've retired as a Giants fan, Ryan, but I, I'm still locked in. No, I, I live and breathe with these uh, Eagles. Yeah, no, it was uh, obviously you're emotional. It was a it was a, a up and down day, as it seems to be. My favorite, I think, I, I'll just say, it, my favorite game to watch you watch the Eagles is against the Commanders every year. Mm, they because are, your, they your, do kind of have our your numbers. expectations never are never aligned with where the game's going to. This is how the game always goes yes. against the Commanders. They it's it's the NFC East. It's ne- it's never going to be specifically the Commanders cuz you think they're little brother and then every time they come and punch you in the dick. We won the game. No, I know. But it they gives you Harper. When's yeah. the last time you you watched the Commanders game and didn't end up with a little Harper? Uh last year. Last year we went into Washington and destroyed them. That's true. <laughs> that was but, but uh, that was one the, of the games. We one of the games. Well, in the yeah. one game they lost. So yeah, they split. Oh, okay. That's So there was some Harper in that game then. <laughs> yes. That's my point. All <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm I just it's it's interesting to watch you watch the ca- the Commanders game. And through the transition too from the Redskins to the football team to the Commanders, it's been the same. We took care of business, got the win, got the dub. Yeah, kind of a uh, what would you say? Kind of wonky uh wonky week for the picks. Nothing nothing that crazy. I I I don't know if the public did really well. I don't know if the Sharps did really well. Well, any any massive takeaways before we get into the games uh, and then it, get to our Monday night picks? Yeah, I think it's fair to say that consensus probably did, or, the, or due to like the, just through the lens of the the circa millions and the other various contests, I would say it seems as though perhaps some uh, sharps took it on the chin. Yeah, it's interesting because the circa millions contest is an interesting barometer because. It's not quite the public, but it has some of the public. But a lot of people who consider themselves sharp are in the contest. If I if I'm being honest with like a contest like Circa, the people in there that you would call like the Joes, they're still getting their ass to Vegas. They're still fi- figuring out a proxy. Yeah. Like sometimes we have to reset our expectations of what a pro and a Joe is. But yeah, I, I certainly think there people who are in that contest. I I, I guess I would I'm. My my opinion is slowly changing as I see people week after week not make picks in the survivor, <laughs> but in general, I would say it, it, it sharper field. So if nothing else, probably we're not looking at the typical public representation in terms of the sides. And if you look at the top picks for the the millions this week, Sean, overall number one pick was the Jags. So nice job by you and everyone else. <laughs> Fucking chalk over there. <laughs> but after that, Steelers minus two and a half. 
Yep. See, my other lock Seahawks didn't come ha- hasn't had. No, no. I'm. I'm. This is the consensus picks in the circa millions. Then after that, it's the Seahawks game hasn't happened yet. Bengals minus two. Eh. Browns minus two and a half. Eh. Uh, after that, Dolphins very popular. Eagles minus eight very popular. Uh, Chiefs minus nine and a half very popular. Oh. So I think I think in general the the betting public probably did not have a great day today. I yeah, don't know because I mean, maybe the dum dums did. <laughs> yeah, well, I, the, the Bills are a great example. Uh, Big Cat made it his nuclear whale play of the day, the Buffalo Bills. But I feel like there was some sharps on them as well. So I, I, sometimes it's hard to decide. And if you uh, if you had an awesome day, if you had a shitty day, if you want to toss someone in the locker, uh, feel free to hop on the SpaceX line. Uh, we are taking all your calls as we recap all the games. Before we get into it, shout out to Little Caesars. Love me some Little Caesars, aka the official pizza sponsor of the NFL, the official pizza sponsor of the Sports Gambling Podcast, Sports Gambling Podcast Network. It is a part of my game day. Should be a part of your game day. It, I, I just, it is delicious pizza. The pretzel crust. I keep talking about the pretzel crust. If you Try their pepperoni pizza with the pretzel crust, and you do not like it. I, I don't. I don't know what is wrong with your taste buds because that thing is just amazing. Uh, you can order online during their pizza pizza pregame one hour before NFL games, and get ready for some football and fun. Choose your favorite little Caesar's pizza, or pick the toppings you crave. I I ordered this on uh, Thursday. We went all uh, uh, you know all in on the little Caesar's feast. Afterwards, I somehow won another little Caesar's pepperoni pizza. So uh, they they have some contests going as well. They got convenient delivery. I, uh, back in the day, it was only hot and ready pickup, but they got you covered with delivery with their pizza portal pickup. So grab some friends, enjoy a few slices during the tastiest hour before kick. Kramer, you mentioned it. Jags twenty three, Falcons seven. My big takeaway: Desmond Ritter sucks, and Janu Smith is dominating the uh, battle of him versus Kyle Pitts. Of course, friend of the program, Dalton and I have a gentleman wager for a a dinner in Las Wait, Vegas. I don't, I don't remember this. What's the wager? I think it's a very specific wager that Kyle Pitts has to be top three in targets uh, for the Atlanta Falcons. He can't. He's not even the top tight end on that roster. Pretty embarrassing. Yes. So any takeaways, Ryan? Uh Desmond, but Desmond Ritter, a, a a problem. Yes, I'll say a problem. I briefly put on the uh, Toy Story uh, feed, which it technically was super impressive. I don't know how they people are saying that kids liked it. Yeah, I, I, I can I see if that. I was a kid, I would like that. I watched it briefly. It is funny to see a guy suck as a toy. <laughs> I watched Desmond Ritter throw picks. As a toy, yeah. If you miss it, youtubecom slash sports gambling podcast, oh. it, and it was it was pretty live. They had the slinky dog as the chains there. It was uh, I could see how you're a kid. It was fun or just a nice little change of pace. You're kind of hung over watching the London game. Any? Uh, are you worried about your Falcons, Ryan? They seem like I, I might still be interested in them at home, but Desmond Ritter turning into a turnover machine. I, yeah, I, I think that you're going to have a situation here where they're they're not going to look good in games where they fall behind early, and they're going to look fine in games where they maybe get up early. Maybe they try out Taylor Heineke. I I don't know different options. See how I did that? I just threw it in with my vernacular. You didn't even notice that I was calling for Taylor Heineke here as a Falcons fan. Wow. No, see that's that's uh, ba- barely a wow. I mean, I'm Desmond oh Ritter. God. Is not good. Yes, uh, that was the uh, genesis confirmed. of my fade of the Falcons was that their quarterback was not good. That being I was said, told every the, the entire fantasy offseason, everyone started. Well, they have Marcus Mariota, and now they're going with Desmond Ritter. Yeah, so that has better. to be an upgrade. <laughs> but how? How does that have to be an upgrade? Desmond Ritter was a big unknown, and there were a lot of flaws in his game just from watching him. Your take might be right. We'll see. We, I mean, it's early. We ha- we have a lot of takes that probably look good, and a lot of takes that look bad. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's a London game. I think that's the, we have to remember that London I, games don't matter. I, I could be intrigued to bet this Falcons team at home because if they can get up or if they can play with the lead and pound the rock, then they get kind of interesting. But if they if they don't score first, and they, they are probably a fun team to fade 
or ride in the live betting market because they, I think it's very clear they cannot yeah. come from behind. No, I, I, you nailed it. I think you just keep you ride the you ride the the slide all the way down to the bottom, right? Buffalo Bills forty eight, Miami Dolphins twenty. Kramer, I went against the grain. This was this to me was like the. I I my handicap was oh this is the too cute game where all the square sharps go well it, it, I mean they're trying to get you to bet Miami blah 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 uh, Bills looked really good congrats on the lock cash and and for bullying me into playing uh, Stefan Diggs and Josh Allen in our DraftKings that stack that we gave well. out <laughs> DFS I I was pushing yeah. hard for AJ Brown also that works. nice little yep. cash yep. there uncorrelated I mean uncorrelated blew my mind still feel like a donkey but it worked <laughs> out I, if we would have went so what did we we needed I'm pulling it up right now okay cuz we needed Achan we went most basically we were we were strangely close so we we uh, 1.5x so not even that exciting. Uh, we finished in eighteen thousand seven hundred and sixty-first place, and yeah, we were we struck. We were close, right? A- Allen Diggs, uh, Kincaid with Mostert probably needed A Chan there. Yeah, A Chan. I'm I'm just gonna continue to fuck this up. But uh, AJ Brown uncorrelated, and then yeah, Mim- Mims and Mooney wasn't horrible. Uh, and Cardinals defense got negative three, so that was <laughs> maybe it's not. Well, always- and and Cowboys defense in hindsight uh-huh. was the uh, was the smash play. But Bills looked really good. Um, my boy Demar Hamlin got into the game. Bills one and zero uh, with Demar Hamlin playing Is and. That- yeah, that I mean, that's that was a tough part of the handicap. And uh, unfortunately for the Bills, I mean, big note uh, moving forward: Tre'Davious White, uh, their cornerback, uh, torn Achilles. So look bad. Yeah, not good for the Bills there moving forward. But that front seven's good. Great win My- for them at home, putting uh, the Dolphins in their place. We'll see. The Dolphins, you- I think, still offensively can do some stuff, but defense, I think you saw it, especially on the road or against really good offenses. Uh, they're they they need Jalen Ramsey. They need they need a couple more guys. It feels like oh, a couple guys. What's short. the other t- big takeaway? The their divisional opponents seem to have some special sauce to slow down the mm. fucking yeah. They seem to know how to play uh, to play Florida. Tyree Kill or some of the teams they've played. As we saw with the Broncos, uh, I mean the Broncos defense might be the worst defense in the NFL like, by a wide margin. Well, they played two. It was a tale of two halves <laughs> in that game. Yeah, well, ju- but, let's ju- let's jump ahead to that game. Broncos at Bears. J- Justin Fields started the game off sixteen for sixteen. He had four touchdown passes. The Bears were up twenty-eight to seven. What are we doing? And then, and then it all unraveled. They end up losing a thirty-one to twenty-eight. The stat of uh, winless <sighs> teams and taking the points there against uh, two winless teams playing each other take the points. Ends up covering as Bullshit. they they lost by three, <laughs> thirty-one to twenty-eight. They covered the spread. Man, both teams. E- even if you're a Broncos fan or a Broncos backer, you coming away from that game, you still feel really bad about the team. Well, I mean, Javante Williams hurt again. <laughs> That's not good. I, I guess. I guess you're not totally set. M- M- McLaughlin. Yeah, he looks fun. Yeah, P. Ryan. Russ. But their defense looks so bad. I Justin Fields was carving them up. Eventually, Justin Fields unraveled. There was a report that Justin Fields was hanging out by his locker alone with all his pads on, just sitting in stunned disbelievement. I would a that's great because, I mean, wh- here's what's crazy: is C.J. Stroud looks amazing in like his <laughs> third yeah. game in a situation where he has no offensive line. Yeah. Weapons that most people would would say are not as good as what the Bears have, and yet here we are. Yeah, I mean, look, I uh, I don't man. This this was we said it was loser leaves town. The Bears were at home, so I guess they got to leave town. Well, and it's crazy because the the they're winless, and so are the Panthers, and they have both those picks. So there's a world where they're going to be like the Texans uh, in the draft, where they have two really high Cardinals. picks. What? Like the Cardinals. What do you mean? Like the card? Oh, you mean like the Texans this year? Yeah, or, or, or the Texans, Cardinals. Texans next year. last year had two really high yes. picks. Yes, and the card, but the Cardinals have the Texans pick, so they will also have oh, two okay. picks. Many were saying, "Oh, they're going to get Caleb Williams and Marvin Harrison Jr." That's not fair. 
right now, uh, <laughs> I don't think they're picking uh, either pick. Well, yeah, Houston's the, winning games, so I know. They, I, that throws that whole great whole thing trade off. by the Texans. People are going to suddenly uh, have a different tune with that one. Uh, are the uh, can can you possibly bet the Bears next week? On a short week, no. The I I saw the look ahead number. It's only five. The Commanders are only laying five points at home Thursday night. That seems crazy for, for a, a Justin Fields led team that has just no confidence. It's wild. It's uh, wild. Minnesota Vikings twenty one, Carolina Panthers thirteen. Wow. Watch the least of this game. <laughs> Very weird game. There were two defensive touchdowns that made. Uh, there were only thirty four points. Uh, 14 of which came off defensive touchdowns. This was the fourth goal line turnover for the Vikings, one for each of their four games. <laughs> the, the touchdown to Jefferson wiped out by hold on Josh Oliver. Uh, my boy Josh Oliver did not go off. And then Kirk Cousins threw the pick six. Eventually, Cousins got the one, I think, offensive touchdown in the game. We were both on uh, Vikings here. This was, I was going back and forth. But when they said Bryce Young was going to play, I I got to fade Bryce Young. He just does not look ready. Shout out to all the Panthers fans that saying I was such a hater for throwing out Carolina last winless team. Uh that's looking pretty decent right now. Ooh. It's just them and uh them and the Bears. Yeah, remember when uh oh, so when much I hate. when I smashed down all the dollars on Panthers under seven and a half wins? Smash! I know they it's were, early. I'm not trying to dance. They anything, were but. comically high. Bryce Young just looks lost. Their defense is really banged up, but I I think their defense is okay when healthy. But they don't have a lot of explosive skill guys, and Bryce Young looks looks very much a rookie. Yeah, the weird. Yeah, weird outcome though, because I, I I feel like for a bit of it, it was a you if you had Minnesota and Survivor, like I almost did. Oh yeah, yeah a little bit of a sweat. Are you uh, in the mood for a caller? Sure, fire up the call line. Take us to SpaceX, Ryan. SpaceX engaged. Yeah, we uh, so Survivor entry with with one cousin Mush who's joining us right now oh, was okay. almost on Minnesota, which I can only <laughs> for content purposes. I almost oh, wish that the that text messages that cousin Mush would have been sending in. All right. Is cousin I'm Mush here. on the line? Yeah. I had him turned uh, off. That was my bad. Hey, I'm cousin here. Mush. How you feeling? I'm tired. It was a very, <laughs> it was a very emotional day. <laughs> what uh, happened? At one point I really, really thought that, uh, Katie's Niners were going to let us down, but uh, they, 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 they somehow pulled it through. Arizona was frisky. Uh, cards ended, or sorry, Not 49ers ended up getting the cover, although Zach Ertz dropped a easy touchdown mm. at the end of the game to backdoor it. But yeah, 49ers were in control. Kramer and I were also on the 49ers in Survivor. Right. But while I have you on, we have to jump ahead and talk about the biggest loss in the bill of Belichick era <laughs> and your new England Patriots. It's a baby fucking wheel, man. Where do we go from? Where do we go from Listen, here as, as Pat? Where fans? do we go? We keep cash and tickets is what we do. <laughs> I mean, how I, I, the bar I was at people were like screaming Patriots money line. It, it's, it's unfathomable how you could waste any money that you've ever earned in your life on this new England Patriots team right now. <laughs> it, it's, it's crazy. And who had a worse weekend uh, or, or who had a worse reaction to their performance this weekend, Brooks Kepka or Justin Jefferson. Did anybody see that? I mean, it's, it's unreal. I mean, I, I'm at a loss. I mean, I don't know where we go next week here in the survivor. Or even the Circa Millions, which is quietly uh, okay so we, far. We don't need to talk about our four and one uh, this week, Mush. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I want to tout. I mean, thank. I, I'm just mad that we didn't switch last minute to the Titans. Oh, we would have had our only five and zero oh in our five years doing this, but <laughs> it, it wouldn't be know. right. It wouldn't be right. So I, I do uh, on the Survivor <laughs> note, I do have the map that we created, Sean. Yes. There's there's a couple clear entries I think and, and uh, some before the season maybe you mapped out like Cincinnati what preseason was a seven and a half point favorite at Arizona. Uh uh oh <laughs> yeah that that yeah, maybe no, that's, that's that's not that's not making the card. <laughs> well and you met you mentioned the Patriots or I brought it up uh, but uh, Capper 
who has been fading the Patriots uh, the entire time. He was actually on our pick show calling in going, Hey, this is actually the game we get up for. <laughs> this is yeah. They're going to be live dogs. He, he seemed excited oh, no. He's in gonna, the chat yeah. about he the, might've been, he might've been on the Patriots today. I don't oh, worry. No. I'll talk him off that wagon. <laughs> He'll be on new Orleans next week. Don't worry. So do, do you want, do you want them to bench Mac? Do you have any thoughts on what they can do from here? I, I mean, the only thought is they really have no solution at quarterback right now. And now after 20 years of kicking the NFL's ass, it's reality in new England and <laughs> it, it's just ridiculous, you know, but Hey, Belichick will be around until he gets the, the wins record and then we'll move on from there. So any, uh, any quick, props quick. you like for Monday night? Um, no, I'm I'm not watching the game tomorrow night. I'm in a beef right now with uh with FanDuel, so I will uh I'll be switching over to DraftKings uh, as soon as I get to New York tomorrow. Okay, oh, well use that good, promo code SGP. Good, good to hear. I uh, will. <laughs> real quick, because we were talking about the Pats, uh, one of six teams to underperform the spread by 21 points. This oh, week, there sure. were five teams that did that today. No. Unfortunately, I've already looked at the lines, and only two are available yeah. for close your eyes. No uh, territory next week. It was Miami, Cleveland. Correct. Miami is minus Miami, who is minus ten next week against the Giants. Cleveland, who has a bye. Pittsburgh, ding ding ding. They'll, they're they're looking like they'll be a close your eyes special at home against the Ravens. New Orleans and New England play each other. So one of those right. will be a closure. I special oh, no. one will not. Let's hope well, it's New Orleans. And New then, England opened up minus two. So yeah. we'll see what happened well, there. Let's hold that. Uh, hopefully all the chowder heads get down. And then <laughs> all and, right, boys, I'm going to bed. All right, all right. thanks, see cousin Mush. <laughs> All right, hey, before we get back into the mix, maybe uh, maybe you're looking to get some last minute tickets to that Monday night game. Between the Seahawks and the Giants, we're going to be talking about our favorite props, including some uh, sweet first touchdown bets. But of course, if you're looking for last minute tickets or any tickets, got to go to Game Time. I haven't even gotten, I haven't even bought my tickets to the Rams Eagles game, even though it's only one week away. I'm not sweating because I know I'm covered with Game Time and their low price guarantee. By the way, if you're going. Uh, to the Eagles Rams, hit me up at Sean T. Green on X. Let's get a little pregame going. Uh, it's gonna be fun. I'm I'm looking around on Game Time trying to find the best price, but luckily I know I'm covered with the Game Time guarantee. They always have the best price in basically because uh, if you can find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you. 110% of the difference. They also have uh, these cool flash deals. So on top of already the, the great savings, uh, they have flash deals on top of it. They also have a button where you can hit all in pricing because it's always annoying to look at it and go, Oh, Hey, that's what they say it costs. But then you get the tickets of fees. They have the all in pricing. So you know exactly how much you're going to pay when looking for these tickets. So yeah, if you're heading to the Eagles Rams, hit me up unless you're a Rams fan. I don't really want to associate with you either way. Go to game time.co download the game time app, create an account, use code SGP and for $20 off your first purchase terms, apply again, create the account, redeem the code SGP and $20 off download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I, I don't believe there are any Rams fans. So don't, don't, you won't have to worry about that. Uh, what will you be in attendance for the pregame show? It's a good question. Oh, we will see. Already punching out week five. I think so. I'm trying to think about the best way to get down to SoFi. I actually Helicopter. think I'm going to take the train. I've mapped out a train Whoa. route. <laughs> who, are you, who are you going to the game with? Well, I think Justin, my buddy from the uh, Die Hard Eagles uh, podcast, oh, he's coming to the is, is talking about coming in from Hawaii and going to the game. So. I think maybe tape the pregame show, leave from here to the train station, get down to SoFi, maybe find a bar somewhere near SoFi, watch the second half of the early games, and then head in. So that's the loose plan right Can now. Can I make a suggestion? Sure. You uh, vlog on the way down during your train adventure. Oh, I, I that's why I plan on doing a bunch of clips and like a, a running diary brought to you by Game Time. So I stay love, tuned for that. I love the train adventure part of it. Well, because everyone, I haven't been to SoFi yet, but 
a Decker and everyone who's been to SoFi says it legit takes four hours to get out of that parking lot. I was there for a youth sports event that was probably maybe 20% capacity and it was a disaster. So yeah. I would, I, I assume if there's going to be a lot of people there and you can't tailgate or anything. So yeah, I'm just going to find a bar that's near there. There is the fans of Philly do have like a tailgate area. Maybe I'll Wait, Maybe they allow you to tailgate. There. I thought that was one of the things that was they, pissing they, everyone off. They rent, they rented some parking lot that's mm, somewhat near there. It's private parking lot. Yeah, that's total LA move. They have the 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 regular lots that suck and are expensive, and then right outside that, they have the private lots that are cash only and uh, way more fun. Ravens twenty eight, Browns three. Kramer, you were uh, touting your Baltimore Ravens. The quarterback was really. I thought the Browns' defense played pretty decent, but they just could not get any help from DTR. That uh, any sort of DTR hype that we had in the preseason, mentioned in the pregame show, Harbaugh against rookie quarterbacks really had me nervous with the Browns pick. But they, the, I mean, they just shut DTR down. He looked pretty lost. Was just like dropping the ball randomly. Their offense seemed completely out of sync. Nice win for the Ravens. It'll be interesting to see if they play again because I do. I still thought the the Browns defense played pretty well. Like if they could have got any help from the offense, maybe they make a game of it. Little role reversal. Yeah. I believe it was a Tyler Huntley game last year against the Sean Watson. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I said it on the pregame show. DTR is the perfect kind of guy that is electric in the preseason, and then yeah. once the regular season speed hits, it just doesn't work. And he did all of it, right? He got spun around and uh, well, not a pirouette, but uh, whatever, whatever Decker keeps. If if you don't watch <laughs> football with, with us, which is the majority of you listening, uh, every time someone does a spin in the NFL, Decker points out that it's not a pirouette; it's a something else. Chablis or a something? Chine, a chine. A chine. A chine. Hey, and he goes, these these announcers they get it wrong. It's factually wrong. I guess well, his wife used to do ballet, and she brought it up to him. And so today, someone actually, I think on the Titans, maybe even Derrick Henry, did it. Actually, did a pirouette, and he was very excited. The things that De- Decker gets into in his own time, uh, very that that could be a whole documentary in itself. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I I, t- I took us way off on on the the right path. Of the, we were talking trains, and now we're talking a Decker's personal life. We need to get back <laughs> on the rails. Uh, but any, yeah, the ra- any to- oh. any thoughts on your oh. Ravens run? I mean, I think you you did you did it was I would say borderline try to clown me about this pick. You did try to block, almost suggest it was a stupid pick to throw on the circuit card. I and almost suggested that. Yeah. I did. Uh, you kind of did. In the I pr- really uh, love that Browns yeah. defense. And I think in this game, the the Ravens were able to move the ball without a number of their offensive weapons. Who they're they're relatively healthy, but they're not all the way. And I, I think if you're a Ravens fan, you're feeling really optimistic about the division. I think if you're a, a Lamar Jackson to lead the division in passing yards ticket holder at twelve to one, you're feeling really optimistic. Oh my god. About the situation uh, that you currently sit in, and we were sitting in the circa Friday before the sports gambling podcast live on Veasan. Every Friday, every Friday, nine p.m. on the West Coast, and, and we, I, I, I think I said something along the lines of, "Man, it kind of seems like this Deshaun Watson news, and the the combination of that and the line had moved down to one and a half at that point." Yeah, I kind of felt just, like it was going to be more serious than it was being let on, and then to hear last minute in the Schefter bombs overnight that he wasn't yeah, going to play. There was a lot of like late quarterback news. Everyone thought Jameis was uh, going to start for the Saints. Everyone thought uh, Jimmy G was going to start, and if not him, Brian Hoyer. We end up getting Aiden O'Connell. It seemed like Deshaun Watson was going to play. He was saying, "I'm going to play." So friend of the program, uh, Connor Allen, and I'm gonna pull it up because he he put out a he basically put out a uh, tweet of like the he or sorry a post on X of the like all the news that oh we, yeah he went through it it was great uh, and it, it's worth noting because some of this shit it's like how all right here we go Deshaun Watson will start was being reported uh, obviously didn't Marvin Mims expanded role that that fucked us in DraftKings. Uh, a couple uh, Zeke to see. Oh, there you go. Z- <laughs> Zeke to see starter snaps. Uh, Roshan Johnson expanded role. 
only six touches. I mean, Jameis is- Winston to start. He didn't start. Joe Burrow uh, was off, off the injury report and healthy. Can we get a fucking investigation on these teams? He's fucking not. Clearly, he was n- limited. If he's not limited, <laughs> we have a bigger conversation to be talking about. Miles Sanders uh, was was supposed to play, and uh, he was out snapped by Ch- Chuba Hubbard. List goes on and on and on. It's just, it, it's it's a total total L for the aggregators this week. Yeah, aggregate. They're they're. The I worst. muted one, Sean. I've unfollowed him. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I'm not even going to say their name. Yeah. Steelers six, Texans thirty. I thought the I love the matchup of <laughs> T.J. Watt versus backup offensive lineman for the Houston Texans. I thought the Texans kind of got away with their patchwork offensive line against the Jags, but back-to-back wins for the Texans, which I was very skeptical of. I was aware of this sandwich spot of the Steelers. I kind of ignored it. They also had a weird travel schedule. They had their plane delayed, which apparently happened again. I don't know. I don't know what's going. What the hell's going on with their plane? But it was a sandwich spot. Then Kenny Pickett ended up getting hurt. I don't know if that ended up making a difference. But I mean, hats off, C.J. Stroud through four games, uh, 1,212 yards, six touchdowns, zero interceptions, 106 passer rating. My selection for rookie of the year. That's looking awesome. I was I, it was I was skeptical early on, but and, and those numbers kind of seemed like garbage numbers those first two games. But he's really played well these last two. Anthony games. Richardson has looked good. He's like, looked good not too. Not bad. And Bryce CJ, Young's the only one who hasn't had good moments. But it's a no brainer between C.J. Stroud and Anthony Richardson at this point. Yeah, it's a no brainer. Bryce Young is very ha- far behind. Oh, I mean the. Aiden O'Connell and Bryce Young are neck and neck. Like that's that in my <laughs> mind. That's uh, uh, we have a caller. Okay. Do we want to? Would we like to talk to that caller? Sure. Uh, well, he, I mean, it's it's probably going to be something. We're, maybe we're going to get something rubbed in our face because of how well they played on Thursday night. I actually wasn't even going to mention that grammar. Uh, oh, joining us on the line, <laughs> uh, noted Lions fan, Easy. Uh, what's yeah. happening, Easy? What's going on, guys? Yeah, I figured I would give y'all a break from that this week, and instead I would just <laughs> tout a win that I had today. Nice. What do you Let's got? So I hit a four leg, three hundred and fifty to one Woo! parlay. Woo! Where was Easy? Where was this on the Woo! pregame show? This is this is why we he have wa- a pregame. He show. was at a sick. He he wasn't in. I wait. Is this the one that I posted? No, this was ah. something else. I was gonna call in, but I was in the middle of nowhere in Virginia. Mm. I didn't have any service, and I, I I could get on for like five minutes, and I figured I'd do the more realistic touchdown than this crazy madness I didn't expect to hit. So <laughs> what what it what uh how, what was it? What do you got? Tout. So it was uh, Pacheco, hundred plus rushing yards. Uh, Puka Nakua, hundred plus receiving yards. AJ Brown, hundred plus receiving yards, and Derrick Henry, hundred plus rushing. Oh Fuck. man! I mean, that I, was three fifty to one. Yeah. Oh uh-huh. man, feels like that should have been easy, even money. Sean, we <laughs> might need to start just checking out the alt yardage markets. Yes, that's another good market, I think, for us to ladder. That sounds nice. Oh, that's awesome! Easy, congrats, man. Yeah, appreciate it. I was, like I said, I mean, I was shocked that it actually hit, but you know. And uh, well, you have to be, otherwise, <laughs> yeah, otherwise you're just to numb. One. Well, yeah, well, true. Yeah. <laughs> congrats to your uh, three and one Lions oh, leading yeah. the NFC North, and congrats on that massive hit, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, we'll be four and one next week too because we play Bryce Young. <laughs> All right, let it ride. Wow. <laughs> uh, speaking I mean, of Puka Nakua, game winning well, touchdown again uh, for the Rams against the Colts, twenty nine twenty three. Rams jump out to that big lead, and then Anthony Richardson slowly worked him back into the game, got them to overtime. Uh, Matt Stafford continues to look sharp for the most part. Puka Nakua continues to ball out. Three straight games now. The 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 defense has made adjustments that have created problems for the Rams' offense. Yeah, and, and so I guess w- worth sure. noting, right? We got to yeah. Least- I I think they're Rams are interesting because uh, are the Rams good? Like, what's your what's your take on them? I think they're of middling teams, they can be frisky, but I, I don't see them making a run in the playoffs. If they can to your point, it does seem good defenses kind of figure them out. I mean, look, the Cooper cup supposed to start practicing soon. Yeah. Quote unquote. So who knows if they can stay healthy? Why not? I mean, Aaron Donald is obviously the defense is doing enough and 
if you add Cooper Cup to this offense, I assume Puka Nakua could like be somewhere else, and it will <laughs> be compatible. I, I, that'll be f- that'll be really funny when Cooper Cup comes back to see the target share, the catch share, because you can't have. Can you have two Pukas in this offense? It, Maybe uh, we'll see a cup and a puka, two cups and one puka. Who two a, cup, one puka? A, a cup, a puka, and a, <laughs> an Atwell. Uh, look, it, it's a it's a law firm, Sean. Well, I, they I, they play the uh, as I mentioned the game ugh. time uh, promo. They the Eagles come into Los Angeles and play the Rams next week. So if they that's going to be a great test. The Eagles defense against that Rams offense. I, I think, like our chances because I I think that offensive line is how you beat the Rams. I think we're going to look at the matchup and and probably feel the same way. Uh, I mean, I guess we'll I see haven't if, gotten see, to my handicap. I guess we'll, we'll see, see what if, the model says. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see if Sean decides to to be sacrilegious and goes <laughs> go against uh, any other uh, you know long standing trends with the show. Real quick, Sean, we before you go to the next game, one note on the Pittsburgh game that we didn't get out I, the the JJ Watt like the TJ Watt not. Wrecking a game on JJ Watt. Oh, day. that's right. Yes, we, we forgot uh, it was JJ Watt day. That's stupid. We got it. Someone, all right. Someone needs to reach out to us and just be in charge of halftime uh, retirement. Yeah, commemoration random things. fan spots that yeah. the fans would know about. They're they're honoring Lawrence Taylor and all this, all the, the 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 Giants are going to be jacked up for that game. Yeah, you, it'll be a uh, it'll be a. Let's see. We'll we'll make a Google Google Doc. There'll be thirty two of you, and your uh, your compensation will be access to all the other sweet ass information. Oh, I like Reach it. Reach out. Tampa Bay Bucks twenty six. New Orleans Saints nine. Uh, Tampa Bay Bucks were my money line dog. Oh, nice job. Nice little uh, run here on the money line dogs. I it, we picked it at the sh- uh, when we taped the show at plus one forty. I actually bet it when we were at the circa on Friday. It was up to like one fifty five, I think, because the line had moved to three and a half. Tampa was in control of this game the entire time. They they yeah, their they defense good. is pretty good. Um, yeah, Jameis Winston did come in the game for Carr immediately threw a pick. So my prediction of Jameis Winston throwing an interception came true, even though Derek Carr <laughs> started the game. Feel pretty, pretty good about that. Pretty impressive. Baker Mayfield final stat line: twenty five of thirty two, two hundred forty two yards, three touchdowns, one interception. He's he's kind of playing within himself, and that was my that was my angle of being slightly you know picking the Bucks to win the division, being kind of high on them. I thought their defense could. Hang in this division, and if Baker didn't try to do too much, just threw the ball to Mike Evans a ton. Chris Godwin got going a little bit this game. What, what's the what was the division price? Do you remember? It was it eight to one? I think it was eight to, to no, one. No, it was nine to one. And then when Jensen went out, it moved up to ten to one. What do you think it is now? I think they got to be even money, right? I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see if they have it open because I and I by the way, yeah. Uh, Sean, we we've been discussing this off air, but maybe we uh, maybe we do a little futures look. Yes, this, this I think week. next Friday when we're uh, out in Vegas, we'll do a future show from the win. Yes, we'll do a future show from the win studio for the podcast audience, warming things up for the Friday night Veasan show. But right now they're three and one. The Bucks are in the division. Uh, Falcons two and two. They kind of look a little fraudulent. Saints two and two, and they just beat the Saints. I feel like they got to be. They're probably laying odds right now to win the division. Oh, see now, now I listen to that CLV. Well, I mean, so are you, are you selling? Um, would you sell right now? Let me. Pull what would I? Price. What uh, would right, I get? What are you the, buying it for? Fucking price. Uh, bucks are plus one sixty five. Oh, okay, so still, I guess Saints they're... plus one seventy five. Falcons plus two twenty. Panthers forty to one. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, they've seen Bryce Young. Philadelphia Eagles 34, the Commanders 31. Uh, Washington comes in with the close your eyes special. Eagles kind of sleepy to start, not s- shocking on the short week there. Battled back, got a nice lead. Uh, Sam Howell drove down, uh, tied the game up, went to OT. Eagles got the win with a uh, nice. Nice, uh, nice Jake Elliott game winning field goal. AJ Brown really went off. I felt like the passing game was probably the best all year. Jalen Hurts threw for 300 yards, two touchdowns, very clean game there. Defense kind of concerning, but uh, this felt like just kind of a division game. I'm, I'm optimistic. D line will bounce back and, or just defense in general 
uh, will bounce back this week against the Rams. They were taught uh, on the post game. I listened to some of the Eagles post game at the time. I wasn't really paying attention to it, but when they got that go ahead touchdown, they, I think they kind of scored too, too quickly. It was second and four in hindsight. They probably would have been better off just trying to get that first down. Cause they were already in field goal range, completely bleed the clock there, kick the field goal then, but they scored really quick on that nice out and up to AJ Brown. And then, and then the commanders had enough time to go down and tie it up. So, I mean, how do you feel? You went against the close your eyes special now three and oh on the year. Yeah. Congrats to the close your eyes special you cheated on <laughs> and you lost. Yes, I did lose. Hope you feel good. Um, uh, yeah, I feel great. They're four some, and some trends are bigger than your bullshit. Eagles are four and oh, it's just us and the, and the uh, San Francisco 49ers close your eyes specials three and oh, and that actually directly <laughs> impacts our audience. Well, I'm Where's the audience, allegiance? the audience knew to play it. Tennessee Titans, 27 Cincinnati Bengals three. Wow. We need a, almost like a sadder cat sound effect for these Bengals. Mm. Kramer, we were all over the Titans here. Felt like a good spot. Derrick Henry had a nice game. Oh, Tannehill just, was throwing the ball, but really it's just this, this Bengals <sighs> offense just sucks. Ass kicking. It, I, my whole takeaway, I was on, on the prop show. I said, um, uh, Joe Burrow under one and a half touchdowns. They didn't get a single touchdown. We have a uh, 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 Jamar Chase. They asked. I don't know how this came up, but he just goes, "I'm always fucking open." If we can play the audio on this, fucking open. Excuse my profanity. I'm sorry. I'm open. I'm always fucking open. Excuse my profanity. I'm sorry. I'm open. I'm always fucking open. Excuse my profanity. I'm open. I'm always fucking open. Where's he from? It, it sounds like he's got a little like a southern sit- in him. Oh, really? I, I was sensing like a little like a city, like almost oh. like a Brooklyn or something. Derrick Henry Ryan had more passing touchdowns than Joe Burrow in oh, this game. I, if only we could have found an alternate market to play that. That would have been amazing. Louisiana. So we were close. Both both marbles in the mouth. A slight. I said side. the South. That was very Southern. Yeah, Louisiana and Brooklyn are very close. Both are very difficult to understand. Uh, uh, geogra- You're giving yourself credit for that one? No, I'm oh. just saying they're both uh, like the dialects of English that are uh, furthest away from the way it was meant to be spoken by the Queen. Any thoughts on the game, Ryan? Ah, uh, I mean, other than the fact that obviously Joe Burrow was hurt. Not sure why he was taken off the injury report. If that was like a confidence thing, obviously the owner is pressuring him to play football, even though his leg is getting worse. Hmm. Uh, you're always fucking open, but your quarterback can't throw the ball right now. I I put this out in the universe earlier, Sean. Won't be surprised if Joe Burrow is on the IR by the end of this week. Really? Yeah. You yeah. got. He, he's obviously. If you're not good enough to beat this Titans team. A team that, I mean, Sean, we've talked about their pass defense. Everyone gets right against the Titans' pass defense, not Joe Burrow. Hmm. So I, I think, w- like, why if, if you if you want to try to salvage the season, you need to get Joe Burrow healthy. Yeah. And by all accounts, it's one of these injuries that you need like three, four weeks. They should have just not played him the up. first few weeks. They want one and three anyway. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, what are you doing? I, I, CJ had a great line on our prop show where they, oh we can't go zero and three, but then you end up going one and three. It, it it makes no sense. Las Vegas Raiders seventeen, Los Angeles Chargers twenty four. We got the start from Aiden O'Connell. We thought we would get the cover, and man, uh, just an amazing performance from Brandon Staley, doing everything he could to blow this game. Uh Watching football with Decker is painful. Oh man, you feel for this guy. He wants, yeah, he, yeah, ah. he's broken. He <laughs> wants them to lose because of bad decision making, but then he also wants them to win so badly. He's so, he's so it's just, tortured. Just, he just kept going. He has to play a perfect game. He has to play a perfect game, oh. and you still don't win. And he, he when loves Josh Justin Jacobs Herbert. was going off, he goes, "They're going to eight, guys. They're going to eight. Hey, guess what? They're going to eight. <laughs> De- Decker versus the it could be its own <laughs> sitcom. Just Decker versus the other versus Brandon Staley, but Brandon Staley has no idea. This is back to back games, fourth and one on their own twenty five. They're up a touchdown or or what? They're up four points yeah. against the Vikings. They go for it. They don't get it. Also, shout out to so many 
quarterback sneaks and tush pushes that were not successful. Oh, there were boy. two Here in we this go. game. There were a bunch that happened. You Mac Jones you, you, had yeah, one that go. didn't work. Mac Jones <laughs> had a tush push that didn't work. Justin Herbert had a tush push that didn't work. Aiden O'Connell had a tush push that didn't work. Maybe it's not this unstoppable play that needs to have a rule change. Maybe there's one guy who's good at QB sneaks. Other guys aren't as good at QB sneaks. I I couldn't. I'd also throw in the Hall of Fame center. Yeah, I might have something to do with it. Yeah, as well. their offensive line really good. They, I think uh, mostly the center. Like he he his his yoga or whatever he's up to, he gets down low. Well, he's not a he's not a big guy, uh, Jason Kelsey. He's just super flexible. As far as this game, uh, Justin Herbert also a uh, broken finger. It looks like we'll see how that how much he was wearing. Was how fucking, much that impacts him? Like who said that? Who was like, yeah, this will work? He went out there with a f- like. It looked like he was just walking around like this, <laughs> like just full on flipping the world off, and then then all of a sudden it's gone. So. And shout out to Justin Herbert. I do think he he's there, playing well. There's this a year. certain population of people that are starting to ask the question of is is this Justin Herbert or is this bad coaching? I, again, we watch every minute of every game with Decker, and it it, it the bad it decisions is, are shockingly consistent. It is really bad coaching with the decision making. It is a team that has no physicality. And a team that has a quarterback that can throw the ball really well and a couple oh, good receivers. So nice. That ball looks so nice. But I, they and can Eckler's they can out. lose they could lose any game. They're doing well and Eckler's out. I don't know if they're I not mean, good for the running back. These back to back wins where they, they tried so hard to lose. Khalil Mack had six sacks. But this is a different randomly. year. They would have lost this last year, Sean. Very, uh, very weird. Uh, Cowboys did run it up against the Pats. Uh, we mentioned it with Cousin Mush, thirty-eight to three. I no respect for the a game baby of football. Fucking can you, wheel, can, man. can you believe they did this? Yeah, they won uh, by thirty-five. I mean, Jesus, do they not respect uh, Wellington M- Mara, the Duke, on the football, scoring so many times? A big Disgusting. A, um, Mac Jones has to go. You put him down. Yeah. I think you is just run it with Zappy. Is he the worst starting quarterback in the league? That's a tough question because I think right, you got starting I think a you franchise gotta put Justin right now. Fields in there. You're starting a franchise right now. Yeah. I would take I would absolutely take Justin Fields on my team before I would take Mac Jones. Yeah. Just on the chance that maybe the coach is really coach. stupid. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Zach Wilson, yeah, sure. He looks like he like something bad happened, like that he was in a cage for a while. So maybe Zach he just Wilson. needs to be free. Maybe we get a big, get some farmland. We let him roam, roam around, <laughs> enjoy the the fresh air. Yeah, this, I mean, my takeaway here would be that I, if there really is this beef with Belichick and Mac Jones, like something drastic's gonna happen. Like I, maybe we're gonna start to see the beginning of Robert Kraft acting like Jerry Jones now that he isn't just mm. casually winning championships all the time. Cause he has it in him. Remember when we saw all the media shots of him, like bringing food somewhere during the pa- or bringing something somewhere during the pandemic owners, flexing their planes, doing good with their planes like that. That's, I feel like that's early onset Jerry Jones <laughs> eventually it just isn't kind yeah, of you know, Robert, Robert Kraft <laughs> likes to get out there. Have to know when to come. <laughs> 49ers 35, Arizona 16. Deep. Th- this uh this Cardinals team continues to scrap. Uh Brock Purdy pl- did play a good game as much as that pains me to say it, but uh they're they're looking good. They're moving up and down, the moving the ball up and down the the field this game uh, had a moment where it almost got interesting, but for the most part 49ers just kind of took care of business at home. Uh yeah, I mean, it does f- it's it's wild because I come away from this game thinking like, God damn! All right, Arizona's for pretty for real. They didn't cover a fourteen point spread, and yet I'm like, all right, yeah, I'm you like, feel I'm good so about good. it. Well, they they moved the ball pretty decently. They're the defense is clearly trying. Uh, the it, effort is not an issue in this card. It season. makes me worried about the infection of NBA into the NFL. If a team with uh, everyone kind of agrees, not the best talent, yeah, just tries hard and they can compete. But again, they they lost by a lot. They lost. <laughs> they did by lose by 19. 19 points. But it felt like a win for the Cards. I mean, uh, if you're a Cardinals fan, this is like best case scenario. You're losing games, so you can still get Caleb Williams potentially, and you're having fun to back up Josh Downs. And you're, and you're, 
<laughs> I mean, would you? I'd much rather have Josh Dobbs than uh, Mac Jones. Josh right Dobbs ain't, is never going to space because he's going to be a backup no, for gonna 15 be balling. years. I mean, he's the perfect backup. He's smart. He knows how to play quarterback, and he's, he's willing, willing to run runner? the ball. Yeah, that's 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 the backup checklist. Uh, Kansas City Chiefs twenty three, Jets twenty. Mm. Uh, KC got a little, uh, a couple scares there. They got a couple good calls going their way. Zach Wilson had some, probably one of the better halves of Zach Wilson's career in that first half. Almost feel bad for him. Well, when he fumbled that ball, when he fumbled the snap, you're just like, gee, Christ, God damn man, it, dude. get out of your own way. I, and I kept going back and forth because we had picked the Chiefs, so I'm I'm rooting for that, but. On the other hand, it would be awesome to see the Chiefs lose because for the survivor, that would have been great. And then it just sticks on this stupid three point win with fucking Patrick Mahomes sliding at the one. Hey, yeah, yeah hey, guys. <laughs> look how so sm- obnoxious. Whoa, whoa, look how smart he I mean, Tariko, if you go back and listen, he was way oh. too happy the Jets covered. T- Taylor. Way j- I, he was just crowbarring it in Taylor Swift stuff left and right. I, uh, he's so I excited. stand by my conspiracy theory. The 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 NFL selling the friendship bracelets. Taylor Swift has a movie coming out. If you don't think the NFL is paying Taylor Swift to promote the NFL and this relationship with Travis Kelsey, I, pull off your blinders. Start 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 seeing the world for what it is. This is a genius marketing move by the NFL. They're getting so many more fans. This dog shit game pr- is going to get an insane rating because they cut to Taylor Swift uh, a number of times. How did they have the friendship bracelets ready to print if they didn't know this was going to happen? Those, those were ago? made in China. Like, come yeah. on. <laughs> the slow boat to China. You think those get the uh, friendship bracelets over there? Uh, listen, you go down to San Pedro, Sean, you see the long wait list to get into the port. I mean, and these our, things are DJ parody friendship bracelets uh, are happening. So stay tuned. Oh yes. That, that is excellent. Uh, yeah. I mean, poor Zach Wilson, I guess, but I, I have a feeling that Zach Wilson has a, a history of being just a, a, a goofball who fucks up all the time, but he's been hit previously. He was, he had some coverage or something. Wasn't in the New York media in, in a hostile locker room. Uh, is this better or worse? If you're if you're a Jets fan, is this better or worse that he got you close to a victory against the Chiefs? Oh, uh, better. Because at least you saw some positive growth from Zach Wilson. At least you saw him running that uh, the West Coast offense like they want him to. He wasn't holding on to the ball too long. Like he he did some things right. Uh, previous games there was just no positives. Second question, why how can Nathaniel Hackett's offensive systems <laughs> possibly be so complex? He's not a complex man. No. He seems like a simple guy. I mean, simple systems, Ryan. Speaking of that, hey, we're going to get to uh some of our favorite props before we do that. Shout out to Underdog Fantasy. Hopefully you've been uh, getting in on these sweet sweet underdog pickums. You can win 5x all the way up to 20x even more. If you listen to the recap show last week, Cameron Kerr called in. He hit a 91 X turning $10 into 910 bucks. They also have their hundred thousand dollar Sundays where all you have to do is uh, play uh, one of the featured um, uh, picks there. They, they pick a different player every, every day of the week to feature. You just have to select one of them and you're entered in their contest. They give $10,000 away to 10 lucky individuals. And of course, go to underdogfantasy.com. Use a promo code SGPN hundred percent deposit match up to $500. That is only running until October 4th. So I don't know what the bonus will be after that. Highly recommend getting in over at underdogfantasy.com. promo code S G P and Kramer props for the Seahawks and the giants. How you feeling about this game going in? What's your oh, confidence I mean, level? Not good. Andrew Thomas isn't playing. Oh man! But I, I mean, from a overall confidence, I think I think Dayball and Kafka have shown the ability to scheme up good offensive plans against bad defenses, and I think the Seahawks have have been a bad defense. Now, do, does J- getting Jamal Adams back make them better? Hmm. I, I mean, I, I think the the reviews are mixed on that. And I also think that the Seahawks will be a little bit wounded, uh, not having some of their offensive linemen as well. So, you know, it's certainly the spread, like the the fact that the Seahawks are getting the the love in the number makes sense, but 
I do think that the like I said, Dable and Kafka have had experience, have done well uh, being able to uh, successfully move the ball against bad defenses. So much like Seattle's done all year, I expect the the Giants will be able to move the ball. And again, let's go back into the conspiracy theory stuff. But but they they're sandbagging every time they've sandbagged some part of their fucking team, like not running any read option against the Niners. I think you you joked about this when because the Niners were talking about this in the media. Uh, they they were surprised they didn't call it. They didn't run read option at all. And so my way to play into the fact that they're going to this week against the Seahawks, I think the Seahawks are going to be an overly aggressive team. So read option, obviously a good way to slow that down. Dan Jones over 34 and a half oh, rushing yards. I have this as well. Well, it's, it's an easy at this price, 34 and a half. I mean, obviously you look at the game that they didn't run any read option and you'll notice he didn't have any rushing yards. He had two carries. Yeah. You look at the other games and you'll notice I think 14 and nine carries for well north of this number. So obviously the uh, computer doesn't watch all the games and it's just average averaging numbers here or, you know, creating simulations. But uh, this is an e- this is an easy pluck for me. Yep, cosine, and I'm also on the Danny Dimes over 34 and a half rushing yards. I'll also go to uh, DK Metcalf over five receptions. I just I, I think they're going to struggle with the physicality that a guy like DK Metcalf brings to the table. He's had back to back games with uh, six receptions. It's a huge target for Gino. I think when they're going to be throwing, it is uh, Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf. That's who they're getting involved. I I I just think the Giants will have trouble guarding. Yeah, last year when they played, uh, it was kind of a weird game, twenty-seven thirteen, but it wasn't because the offense was very dominant. He only went six for fifty-five. So did did hit that over though. Yeah, nice. Just saying, didn't have like a crazy like can't handle his physicality type of performance. Next up, Darren Waller <laughs> over 48 and a half receiving oh, yards. Dar- Darren Waller. Darren Waller. Uh he's sitting on uh, north of 20% target share and Seattle is the worst team in the league at uh, yards per target to tight ends at north of 10. So that hmm. that's a first time first down every time. So I think this could be the Waller kind of breakout game. Probably look to experiment in some of his yardage props like we were talking oh, about earlier. Well, this is once again. I think that maybe we have to explore a new world because the anytime and first touchdown markets are being uh, harvested, like the rainforest, (laughs) all going to be dried up. And so, yeah, I I I do think when you um, yeah, so and I think specifically the hundred plus yard ones are like juiced a little bit. Like like in our favor, so good stuff. Anyway, Darren Waller, forty eight and a half receiving yards. I think it's a great matchup, and I think again they're gonna be able to scheme stuff open against this defense. For me, I will go to the uh, run game for the Seattle Seahawks. Give me Kenny Walker over sixty four and a half rushing yards. Giants twenty eighth in the league, uh, allowing one hundred thirty eight yards per game. And Kenneth Walker, last two games, aka the two games they've won, he's been a big part of their offense. 17 and 18 carries in each of his last two games. You don't even have to have an amazing average to hit 64 and a half if you're getting, oh, you know, close to 20 carries. So 64 and a half feels a bit low for D, uh, Kenneth Walker, aka K9. All right, let's fight on this one. Uh, this one I actually have. Uh, Fairly well researched. The Giants are, are fairly good. The Winks Winks uh, front system is a fairly good matchup for the way that the Seahawks block. And and good example would be last year. He went eighteen for fifty one. Not very efficient at all. Two point eight yards hmm. a carry. And so I actually, again, the film guys that I like are actually more worried about Charbonnet and his running style ah. versus Kenneth Walker. So I, I took the under on Kenneth Walker. If you if you did want to take an anti giants or pro Seahawks angle, I don't know if the workload's going to be there, but I think the, the way that um, maybe if you can get a Charbonnet total yards uh, situation, but yeah, I'm actually going to fade Kenneth Walker. Um, like I said, I, I think the way that the, the giants play up front is, is a problem for the way that the Seahawks are trying to block them. And specifically Kenneth Walker has a little of that Rashad white in him. He's not, he's not as decisive. 
And so, although his good runs really look good, he's one of those boom or bust guys. When he's a bigger back, he probably shouldn't be operating that way. Again, eighteen for fifty-one is is suggestive of this is a boom or bust guy who didn't have a boom that game. He did still score a touchdown for fantasy. Okay. Also, was not involved at all in the passing game. Yeah, I I still like his. Uh, right. I, I I'm, I'm on the under, so go, you know, go fuck yourself. Lock fight. Dog. We, need, we, need a, we need a sound effect. Maybe we can harvest. I did record. There, there will be some private. Uh, may, maybe we'll make some of it pu- public. Decker audio. <laughs> that if nothing else, we're going to turn it uh, at least a part of it into a drop. Yes, that feels like a good. Uh, maybe, maybe for the uh, patrons, Ryan. Ooh. Bonus Decker content well, I, only we, for we the gotta, patrons. We got to clear it by Decker. Yes, first. he is. It's very. He's. It's raw. <laughs> it's emotional. He's talking directly at his head coach. <laughs> it, the conversations he has between <laughs> him and uh, Staley are just uh, just really amazing. Kramer, first touchdown bets. First touchdown. Let's do, do it. Do you want right. to go first? Yeah, you go first. I, okay. I, I'm predicting you have one of mine. Okay. First up for the New York Giants, give me Paris Campbell, thirty to one, and yet he's leading the team with red zone targets uh, with three. That to me is a pretty easy layup. Uh, give me Paris Campbell and then give me Jalen Hyatt, 25 to 1. He is the only explosive skill position player they have. Oh, how dare you? I had to find a dig, but he's he's a guy that you might I think you can take deep shots on this Seattle defense. And if there's anyone to convert on it, I think it might be Jalen Hyatt. I don't see the Giants having a ton of explosive plays. If they do, I think it is Jalen Hyatt at 25 to 1. I like the odds there. Kicking it over to Seattle. I one, this guy's an amazing name, but give me Jake Bobo, 35 to one, two red zone targets, one for a touchdown already. Great name. Great name. name. G- amazing profile photo. Just the guy <laughs> you want to get involved and, cl- and the, the play they designed for him. It did feel like they schemed it up for him. So Bobo at 35 to one. I like that the a receiver and then Colby Parkinson. So they have no offense. They have Will Disley. From what I'm reading, it looks like Will Disley to be out again, uh, and that means Colby Parkinson will be getting a pretty good role. Last uh, week, when uh, Will Disley was out, he had three catches for 38 yards, was on the field for 71 percent of the snaps, and you're getting him at 35 to one. This is one of these get ahead of the injury news before it's priced into these first touchdown markets. Uh, so yeah, Colby Parkinson, 35 to one, Jake Bobo, 35 to one, Jalen Hyatt, 25 to one and Paris Campbell, 30 to one nailed it. Uh, we both have Colby Parkinson. Yeah. 35. Again, the pricing is not correct. Uh, it's the same as Disley. Disley is, is going to be out. Uh, but I, I also safely am going to slot in Noah fan too. I think the giants the still, still going to be susceptible to tight ends. Uh, I, I'm just, it's just going to be the way it is. So two tight ends for the Seahawks, which by the way, I looked into a, their skill position guys are all like really, really pricey hmm. unless you want to do JSN. I, I looked into the idea of doing Gino one touchdown all of last year. So yeah, uh, but I, I had a hunch. I didn't do it. So I went tight end, tight end Parkinson Fant for the Seahawks for the giants. I hate to crap all over one of your picks again, but I, I do it at I, your own peril. Well, I'll, I'll help you because I, I I think it's for two guys. I think that we're going to see more Jalen Hyatt in lieu of Isaiah Hodgins, okay, to to get more explosive. But I also think we're going to see the Wandell Robinson deployment, and that's all going to be Paris Campbell stuff. And so I actually like Wandell Robinson at forty to one. Mm. I think he's going to get all all the targets you just listed. It's the same justification I'm using. He's getting slotted into the the role. I think he was always the guy designed the slot, for the role. Was a slot. And I think he looked pretty damn healthy last week. The other guy I'm going to roll out there. I'm, it's hard. For, I'm I'm probably going to play him as long as he's thirty to one or more every time the Giants play in prime time, and that's Daniel Bellinger, thirty-five to one. Yeah, I he, thought about him, but they they had they the tackles are probably going to be uh, Evan Neal and Azudo. He's going to be out there helping them. He's going to be out there in general in the red zone packages. So I just I like the idea that he's on some sort of boot action like flat route. 
uh, because that he runs that route for him. And you know, guess what? Darren Waller gets all the eyes. So thirty-five to one, Daniel Bellinger to go with Wendell Robinson, forty to one. Noah Fant, twenty to one. Colby Parkinson, thirty-five to one. You got some D-Gen action? Yeah. Yeah. What was that? I was just struggling uh, to to put the finishing touches on this uh, <laughs> D-Gen's only parlay. Hashtag D-Gen's only. Okay. Start with uh, DK Metcalf over four and a half receptions. DK Metcalf touchdown. Wow. Okay. Colby Parkinson touchdown. Seahawks money line forty to one. Oh, all right, all right. Not crazy, but also kind of crazy. A little crazy. Yeah. Are right, you ready for this? I'm ready. You asked me how confident I am earlier. <laughs> Giants minus six and a half. Waller seventy five plus receiving uh, yards. I love him. Wandell Robinson anytime touchdown. That pays sixty to one. Sixty to one. 60 wow. To one. Three things. Oh my god. Well, Ryan. So you feel you feel pretty good about the Giants. You want to give out a final score prediction for the Giants? Hmm. Feels like a trap. Why? Uh, cause you're going to use it against me. That's, that's probably no. And so when you nail it, we can cut the clip up and go, all right, Ryan Kramer, the sports gambling podcast nails the giant Seahawks prediction. Got it. And nails a 60 to one same yes. game parlay, but uh, we will say giants 31 Seahawks 23. Ooh. All right. So you're also on the over then, huh? Yeah. Okay. Would, would be surprised if the game does not go over. I think both teams are going to have some success on offense. Although oh, Monday got, night, Monday night has been a shit show for scoring. You got t- here's the what I, what I don't like. The Giants are ro- going to have two rookie corners on the field. One of them will probably be on DK Metcalf. Hmm. I, I not a match. Tyler Lockett <laughs> against a rookie, not a match. Although I I do think they're actually going to have a Dory. With Lockett, but yeah, I just I don't like the matchup of DK against a a, a young guy. Yeah, smaller. Again. I like it actually, but then again, I'm betting on DK Metcalf. But now, if if that if that cornerback plays well against DK Metcalf, he he's arrived. It's gonna rip out his pass. He's fire. arrived. Hey, we will be back tomorrow night after the Monday night game. Of course, recapping Giants Seahawks and then college football picks, baby. The cycle starts all over again. Hey, <laughs> sports game on podcast.com slash YouTube. Make sure you smash that subscribe button. And uh, also, uh, I feel like I got to catch up. We've gotten some awesome podcast reviews. Hmm. So I will read off these three reviews, or uh, three is a lot. I'm going to pick, um, so stretch it out. <laughs> I'll read off these three reviews. If you sent one of these in, uh, send us a, send us an email merch at sgpn.io. Hook you up with a twenty five dollar gift card. These are all five stars. Uh, uh, Kramer or sorry, Sean and the Kramer dog are so dialed in on the NFL props <laughs> bet. It's insane. They're they're like bet Ron Bell for first touchdown oh, score. Nice. They both seem pretty sure about it. I bet it in a hit for thirty three <laughs> to one. That kind of thing happens on this podcast all the time. Being a Giants fan, I hate it that he's always right when Boston Scott is going to score a G uh, damn touchdown. But I bet it anyway because I want the money. Shout out to you, real busy. Appreciate the five stars. I like the name. Got another one here. Friends from high places. I've been waiting to write this review for a while. Been a listener for three years. I work construction, so it's not unusual to hear each podcast two to three times over the day. Don't laugh. These studs are my friends. The picks are right, and the picks are hot. We obviously are here for picks to stack the money green, but I stay for the friendships. If oh, my wow. friends were into sports gambling as much as Sean and Kramer, it would be mirror image. They support curiosity and total trash talk is in key. I listen, explore. It's always important to explore. Yes. Uh, another one. Tell me another podcast giving out this many winners. They shouldn't be t- <laughs> they shouldn't be teaching financial literacy in these schools without mentioning SGPN first touchdown prop picks. Appreciate that. Hour long listen that sounds like your buddy's talking ball and it pays dividends in this economy. My friends always tell me about the blockheads they listen to on their favorite podcasts and I always point to SGPN and ask them, when's the last time these guys gave you a 28 to 1, 30 to 1? Case closed. Let it ride, King Street J. Uh, you know, I gotta be honest. I, I heard a guy. We recently were talking to a guy who said, "In this economy, a couple yeah, times." It's a fun. It's a fun thing to drop. Yeah. Hey, hit us up. Uh, we'll get you hooked up with some merch. 
And uh, again, appreciate all the Patreons and your support as well. Sports Gambling Podcast dot com slash Patreon. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, second the money green. He's Ryan. Go Giants. Kramer, let it ride.